do, which is get the Abide app, which it just so happened there was a passage that they talked about in that app. And my husband was sitting right next to me and I was talking about not worrying, not to worry. There's only so much you could control. And even with money, with bills, and there's only so much you could do. And it's all those little things that is stopping us from trying to concentrate what's important and trying to focus on what we need to do. So I do notice I'm starting to realize that there's so many things that's trying to stop me from doing what I need to do. So hopefully with, you know, this exercise and me writing it down, I'm actually recognizing how much of the things I put aside and not pay attention to what is priority or if I can make the time with, you know, the important people like, you know, family, husband, of mm -hmm. course, but what do I need to do to keep motivated on what is important, like my personal growth, like I need to know when to stop and step away and work on what I need to do. Um, the second part, the impatience in my life, I think what gets me frustrated is um, when things don't go way, the way I planned it, I'm more of a let's go, let's do this, let's get this going, and then when something deters me to something else or something isn't working out, or if my partner is not, you know, doing something that um, at the same urgency that I'm expecting, you know, that really gets to me or those little things just makes me want to just, you know, throw it all on the floor and okay, I'm done. I'm going to step away until you're ready to do that. And I can take the initiative to do things on my own, but is that something that I, do I feel like I should do? I, I don't know. So that's where I'm at right now. Okay, there you go. <laughs> there was my journaling. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. We appreciate that. Great job. Hey guys, it's Wendy. I'm so hey, glad Wendy. I got to hop on. That was so great. Thanks for sharing. How are you guys? We have so many people on. That's awesome. So today what Elise and I wanted to talk about was cleansing and clogging. Um, I read a really great um, passage in a book the other day about choosing, you either have the option when you make choices, and we choose, we're usually choosing between one or the other, and usually we choose something that will be cleansing to us, or it will clog us, and being the spiritual entrepreneurs that we are, we have to have our vessels clean and cleansed so that we are readily available to receive the inspired downloads that we need on a daily basis. And, you know, I always know Elise talks about the inspired daily action. And I love, equally love that as well, because every single day I just ask, okay, what would you have me do today? How would you have me that have this show up in my life today? What inspired action would you have me take today? How would you like me to move forward with that? And so we have to make sure that we are setting ourselves up properly to be able to be ready to take that inspired action and to be able to receive the inspired action. So if we are not eating properly, eating healthy foods, if we are not taking time for ourselves, personal development, it all starts with personal development and being aware of the thoughts we're thinking, the words we're saying, the actions we're doing, which are creating the habits that we have. I'm going to flip here and um, look at my notes for a second because I left my book in the other room and I don't want to have to go grab it because it'll be loud. <laughs> so there's three questions that you can ask yourself when you need clarity around when you are trying to decipher whether something is clogging and disconnecting you or if it's cleansing you and making you readily available. So we can hit the reset button on any of these preconceived ideas about behaviors and choices. And you have to ask yourself, is your behavior or choice causing good or is it causing harm? So for example, 
Um, I know for me personally, prepping food is something that is, I don't make a priority because we are a busy family of seven and prepping food usually isn't on the top of the to-do list. So I hire that out. And I know that if I don't hire that out, it definitely sets me up to make bad decisions that would clog me, so to say, um, spiritually <laughs> and physically probably. But um, so sometimes it's easier to skip a step. You know, sometimes it's, it's faster, it's easier to choose a different option, but what is the aftermath of that going to cost you? And so there's a couple of questions that I'm going to ask you and you guys can write them down if someone wants to type them in the chat box so people can see them, that would be helpful. And then you guys can journal through these. I just read this and journaled through this myself um, just the night before last and it was super helpful. And I always love helping you and teaching you on what I'm currently going through as well. And so, okay, question number one. Does doing this habit of mine, um, so you can put this on anything that you are currently going through. I mean, it can be anything from health to spirituality, fi finances, business, uh, relationship, any one of those areas, okay? So does doing this habit of mine or thinking this way or choosing this response, does this connect me to or disconnect me from my goals? So ultimately, is this leading me towards my dreams, my desires, my values? Uh, of what I truly believe, because all of our thoughts actually stem from our values and our identity in who we are and what we believe is true. So is your action, is your thought, is your response moving you to your goal or is it moving you away? And so, like I said, this can apply to everything in your life. Uh, number two, on a scale of one to 10, how important is it for me to engage in this behavior or make this choice? So it says, wherever it ranks on the one to 10 scale, ask yourself why. Why does it rank so high or why does it rank so low? If you answer with a two and you still go ahead and do it anyways, you're going against your internal compass. This is another way to get off track and get disconnected from your desired future and clog your energy from opening up possible outcomes. Okay, so what I want what I want to share before I go on to number 3 is that there was a pivotal moment in my business when I realized that sitting at my desk making flyers was oh yes, Liz, I can repeat number 2. Hold on, let me. I don't know if it's going to keep letting me um if you're going to see me or not, but number 2 is on a scale of one to 10, so basically you are going to measure on a scale of one to 10 how important it is for you to engage in this behavior or make this choice. So for example purposes, we're gonna talk about Wendy making flyers in circa 2009 <laughs> for her direct sales network marketing business because that was working. Um, that was me working my business with sitting at a my desk for eight hours at a time making a flyer because why I was procrastinating because I was scared and I was fearful of reaching out to people. And so there came a moment in my business when I had to decide like that activity was clogging me. That activity was pre preventing me from obtaining the desire of this future that I wanted this dream of making X amount of dollars to be able to make an, a better impact and to have time freedom and financial flexibility and to be able to pay it forward and help others. Sitting at my desk, participating in an activity that was clogging and causing procrastination and it was not income producing. I could have just used the company's materials, but for some reason I wanted to make my own. But there was a pivotal moment, and that's what number two 
talks about. Number two, it says, is this another way to get off track or disconnect you from your desired future and clog your energy from opening up possible outcomes? So then it leads into number three, and it says, is, is it really what I need? Maybe you ranked your choice on or habit high on the one to 10 scale, but you know that despite its importance, it's still unnecessary. If you don't really need to go, um, this example, I'm reading straight from the book. So uh, it says, if you really don't need to go dancing, it's talking about salsa dancing, or whatever the individual activity choice or habit is, question it, earmark it for now, and then come back to that. So is it really what you need? Like at some point you have to stop and ask yourself, like, why am I eating this processed food again? Why did I choose to hit the snooze button today and not get up and go work out? Like, Why did I not open my mouth and ask that person if they've heard of the five experience? Self-evaluation, self-awareness, being so in tune with yourself that you are very aware that, okay, that activity that I just did, I was doing it because I was avoiding an uncomfortable conversation or I was avoiding the possibility of being rejected, but you really didn't know if you'd be rejected or not. It's being so in tune with yourself so that you are aware that every single choice is leading you somewhere. And when you get to the point in your life that you realize that it's not big choices or big decisions that change your life, it's the tiny ones. It's the tiny little shifts that you make that change the outcome of your life. It was the tiny little phone call when Elise called me and said, hey, I think I found something we need to do together. You're going to feel great. Trust me. That wasn't like a huge momentum, like the the heavens opened up and rainbows started shining down. It was like, jump off the cliff now, Wendy. It was a tiny little shift. It was the opportunity for me to say yes or no. It was a simple question. It was a simple answer. I chose yes because I listened to my gut instinct. Little tiny shifts throughout your life are what are going to add up to the big outcome, which is your desired future. You know, it was the, the tiny little conversation that I, I always count backwards, like Mel Robbins, five, four, three, two, one. And then I just do it, right? So I had um, one of my 200K leaders today in my organization. I was scared, scared, scared out of my mind to reach out to her. But I just did it anyways, five, four, three, two, one, sent her a message, drove out of my way two hours to give her a sample pack. I drove two hours to deliver a sample pack to her. Uh, We were in a restaurant, like we met at a restaurant, and I had my children with me. So remember, at that time, they were one month old, one, two, and five. So I literally like had a nursing four-week-old baby, three kids in diapers, and they literally were like bouncing all over the walls because we just drove two hours. So they, they wanted to get out and run around, and they were like bouncing all over the place. My kids are good kids, but they were little and they're like jumping underneath the booth and up on over on top. And I'm like trying to explain to her how this thrive thing works. And she wanted real answers. And I'm like, I don't know. I feel great. Just trust me. (laughs) And it was, I mean, it was that tiny little moment that I was like, no, having children is not an excuse as to why I can't drive two hours to go two hours one way to give her a sample and then drive two hours back. And then, like, it's just this, these tiny little shifts, but I was able to make tiny little shifts, as are you, because you are self-aware. You are aware that this is in alignment with my dreams. This is not, right? So I, I very early on, I eliminated TV. I eliminated going out on a Friday night. I eliminated um, doing more fun things than most people. And when I say fun things, I mean like, I mean nothing bad, but fun um, extracurricular activities because I had a dream and I had a goal 
And I wanted to be able to produce financial flexibility and time freedom for my family. And so I was willing to eliminate certain activities in my day-to-day -day life that are tiny little shifts. I simply stopped watching TV for, I mean, you guys, seriously, if you watch one less show a week, that's an hour. Like you can do a whole lot of reach outs and a whole lot of follow-ups in one hour. So what if you eliminate one hour per day? seven apps that you just gained seven extra hours you good job melissa we haven't had cable in like four years melissa said she canceled her tv yeah we haven't it's probably been more than four years actually we still don't have cable and we never never really even watch tv but do you understand what i'm saying they're like these tiny little shifts and so when you're able to ask yourself cleanse or clog cleanse or clog should I drink a bunch of pop today or a bunch of water? Cleanse or clog? Which one is going to line me up to my desired future? How does that sound? Joe, I love seeing your smile. <laughs> That's so helpful. Good, 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 good. Okay, does anyone have a takeaway? Question? I'm going to speak because... Please! If I tell you... um. I've been going through it a lot lately. There's just a lot of things coming at me from a lot of different angles. And, um, of course, of course there is. Right. Yeah. I'm no different than anybody else who's listening right now. So, um, I, I just, it's really funny because I look forward to the journey to freedom thing. And so when I was like, all right, I got to do this at four o'clock and this is my situation. I had a, um, a rough day. And, you know, you know, when you get the, when you get the, you know, you're getting ignored and all this other stuff, you know, so it's kind of tough. And on top of everything else, I really started thinking, okay, so now, and I'm going to really like share right now, like what's good. Going, but, good. Um, We're here for you. Being sorry. Sorry. So is hey. So, okay. So, um, um, I think just being in the financial situation I'm in right now, things have gotten, you know, progressively not better. I don't want to even put it out there, but they haven't gotten progressively better because as time goes on, I'm not really able to do what I need to do to get myself to a good point. And I always find that I try to make decisions. Hold on. Sorry. It's okay. I always find that I try to make decisions about my business when I'm feeling my worst and it's a bad habit. So I've tried to be more self-aware and say, okay, you know what? Let me not do that. But it happened again today. So right away well, I was thinking, go let ahead. Me, let, me, let me stop you for just one second. Yeah. Bad habit, but great awareness. Right. And I acknowledge so, that. I received that. Thank good. you. Good. Celebrate, celebrate the awareness. Yeah. And I just, I just think that, you know, there's like so many things happening right now and I don't want to make the finances the front burner. But unfortunately, you know, we go through what we go through and money is a big deal. And so I, I, I find myself trying harder in my business to not teeter and go onto that line of desperation versus, you know, aggressive, you know, IPA. And um, I said to myself today, I, I really need to just kind of like let Lavelle go, like I'll thrive but I'm going to just give it what I can give it when I can give it. And I need to, whether I'm feeling good or not, put myself in some sort of work environment that I can, you know, survive. in. I don't know. I mean, this is the stuff that was going through my head today because, you know, it's, 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 you know, everybody's got their own thing. So I'm no better or worse than anybody else here, but I'm just going through it and I'm having a super hard time. So even filling myself with the word, you know, I, I can read books, I can watch videos, something is happening where I am getting so in my own way, hour by hour. And I feel like it's, it's just been a struggle for me. So I'm glad I came here today to, to hear about the cleansing versus clogging thing. And I wrote down specifically, um, is my decision in alignment with my dreams and going and, and forcing myself while I'm not feeling well 
to just put myself into a worse situation is not in alignment with my dreams. My dreams are in helping people through this product, but I'm, I'm going to say it right now. And I don't know who else is going through that here. I am scared out of my mind that I am making the wrong decision because I need, I'm the type of person that needs to see fruit, the fruits of my labor. And I get, you know, Amber Rice says, you're not going to plant seeds on Tuesday and go out and have carrots on Wednesday. Like I get it, but I've been doing a lot of planting. My nails are dirty. You know, <laughs> I'm doing the, you know, the trowel, everything. Like I'm, I'm tired. And it's tough to just keep myself going every single day waiting for the harvest. So I'm just struggling. So I wanted to just share that maybe, you know, you and Elise always tend to have a lot of wonderful spirit inspired words of wisdom for me to kind of set me back on track and shift that needle even just a little bit. So I'll take what you got, girl. Okay. So let's shift the needle one, just one notch. Okay. So one question. Some, so everything that you just said, I understand. You muted. I don't hear you. Can you hear me? No. There we go. Can you hear me now? Oh, now I, I, you probably couldn't hear me because my alarm was going off and it was reminding <laughs> me to expect big miracles. So oh, I'm assuming amen. that that was our sign to, that I needed to share that with you. Amen. So, okay. I, I hear you, I see you, I feel you, you are safe here. Thank you for opening up. Um, I love when people are bold and stand up and open up because everyone in the room appreciates your vulnerability and the, your ability to be authentic and genuine um, is helpful to everyone and benefits everyone. So first of all, I want to acknowledge that. So with everything that you said, if you could sum all of that up, because there's quite a few things that I would love to help you walk through. But if you could sum all of that up into one question, what would it be? One question for me to help you move the needle forward one notch right now. How can I shift my thinking from an incessant scarcity mindset to dreaming big and not thinking that my goals are so lofty that, that I'm putting myself in harm's way. That's how I feel right now, that I'm literally putting myself in a worse situation because I'm asking myself the question, Joe, there's one thing having dreams and there's another thing not living in reality. Where are you right now? So this is what I do to myself and it puts me in that scarcity mentality that I, I spiral and then I'm not even productive. So it's like, yeah, that would be, I mean, I don't even know if that was like one thing that was like craziness, no, that, but you're, 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 you're fine now. It's like 10 more. <laughs> it's okay. I got you. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> What I hear you saying is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, building a Lavelle organization is scary and unrealistic. I've had a lot of failure within it. Yes. I've had, you know, I mean, listen, and I fail forward. Somebody taught me that recently, fail forward. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm failing forward. I get it. I have all the knowledge of what to do. Yeah. So do you think that maybe the, the only difference between you and me or Elise is that we don't look at failure as failure and that we look at failure as a learning tool to grow and course correct? I try to do that every opportunity I get, but this fear just sneaks the hell in on me all Okay, the so time. where is that fear coming from? Because the, the fear is the root that we have to get to and uncover. I get we're safe, but I'm thinking to myself, this is getting broadcast on YouTube. So I get like, I get like crazy right now. So I'm trying to like put things in perspective. Okay, so. <laughs> um, it's okay. It's, it's. 
your There's vulnerability will teach others. So I hope that so. will be I a blessing. So. And um, you just, and you just said that you want to help people. I do. I do. You're, you're helping okay. people right now. So here's the thing. I think that all of this. Okay. Is will you take a big deep breath first? <sighs> okay. Okay. So I believe, uh, listen to the, the change in my, my volume. I believe that a lot of this is stemming from um, my limitations from my, my recovery and my brain surgery, um, my financial situation, my mother, um, who has stopped progressing as far as her recovery and she's, um, she's having to stay full time in the nursing home now. Um, because she's got really, really um, progressive dementia. Um, I'm trying to take care of the lawyer with with her in, in regard to her protection and her finances. And um, I don't, I feel like I'm, I don't even work full time, but I feel like I'm so spread thin because this thing is is just running overtime. And no matter how much I know, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is in charge. His plan is what's happening. I have to trust. I have to focus on that. I'm losing focus minute by minute. And I don't, I don't know how to stop this. And I don't want to alienate myself from people because that's what I tend to do. Okay. So let's practice some self-love first. And congratulate you for speaking up because you're already changing your habit patterns. So instead of closing off, running away and quitting, you are already changing your neural pathways in your brain. And that may be why you feel like you're spinning out of control because you're doing what is not technically normal for you because you is, is am, am I kind of on the right track here? You know what? It's so true because, and I've been saying a lot lately, and this is completely in alignment with that, that I literally am not used to, like, I'm always the person, like I went to, I went back to school. I worked hard. I got a 4.0. It's the product of my hard work. I go to a job. I work hard. I get promotions and raises. It's the product of my hard work. I try to sell and share thrive. I reach out, reach out, reach out. I get ignored. I get isolated. I get, um, you know, taken advantage of sometimes with my niceness or how I'm trying to help people. And even though I protect and guard myself, there's no full, like, here you go. Here's the rewards for everything that you have put in. It, it's not that instant thing. This is direct sales is very different. I'm having to learn so much about myself in order to progress yeah. towards success with it. Yeah. Well, I think this brain surgery just came at a really bad time too. So that's not helpful, but you know, <laughs> let's call well, it. Well, I know <laughs> both the Elise and I have always believed that direct sales it's uh, we really are a personal development company disguised in a direct sales. <laughs> And yes, Elise said it's divine timing. It is truly divine timing. And I, I really want you to congratulate yourself and celebrate yourself. In, instead of, Elise said, personal development with a comp plan attached. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want you to celebrate you saying yes to you. Because yes, you have a lot on your plate right now, but you're doing it. I mean, you're conquering this. You are every single day getting up and choosing to say yes again, despite the so-called failure or defeat or the no's or the rejection. And remember, rejection is just God's protection. So rejection isn't necessarily a bad thing. Right. I, I had to get to a point where I played games with my mind, so to say. And when someone would say no, I'd be like, thank you <laughs> in my head. Of course, I wouldn't say that out loud, but truly because I would take it so personally because I wanted to help everybody and I wanted to love everyone. And when they wouldn't see the vision that I saw, it hurt me 
And when they wouldn't respond, and when my best friend called it a joke, and my own dad said it was a flash in the pan, those words hurt. And so I have to tell myself, rejection is God's protection. It's a no for a reason. That no is a blessing. So see, I don't look at it as failure. I don't look at it as I'm a screw up and I did something wrong and I'm not good enough and my tree isn't producing fruit fast enough. Course correct. Course correct. Course correct again. That was another no. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Because what if, what if for some reason that certain situation would have brought in another situation that you would not have been able to handle? Then I've been it blessed. It is a blessing. Right. Yeah. So rejection is okay. Don't take it personally. No is a part of the game. Go get a few more. Yeah, it's I think okay. I course corrected in the sense of a lot of times with a lot of the people I've been pouring into as far as, you know, a lot of the existing Facebook friends, um, I have said, all right, you know what? I set a personal goal for myself to increase my network by like 30 people. And I literally join like groups that, you know, other people who have Morkies and, you know, so we're like talking about our dogs and I'm trying to develop the relationships there because I just need new blood. I need I need newness. I don't want to keep hearing no from the same people over and over again. I need new people. So I've course corrected in that sense and hoping that that brings me to a more fruitful existence within this business. Um, and if it doesn't, then I course correct again. I, I'm not going to stop thriving and I'm not going to walk away from, you know, being who I am. I don't want to. Good. You know, I don't want to. I just, I, I'm just trying to combat my mind that's telling me other things. And so, you know, it's, it's a daily struggle. Do you ever, let me ask you this. Do you ever um, sit and dream? Do yeah. you, do you, do you ever just sit and close your eyes and imagine a, a day in the life of Joe as a 200 K leader, as a Lavelle millionaire? We did it at the last retreat. Oh, and, perfect. Of course you yeah, did. And I, and I wrote it down and I do go back in my journal and look at certain things. I have issues um, that at the retreat before where I met you that when, when I was challenged with the question, you know, picture your happiest day. I don't, I have a, I have trouble envisioning that. So as much as I attempt to dream and as much as I try to put myself in that place, the closest thing I could come to was like Disney World, which is like, I'm a 42 year old, like and the closest thing I can think of happiness is hanging out with Mickey Mouse. Like I need to get it together. So, you know, it's, uh, okay. It's, so it's no, this is now. totally, this is totally perfect. So, um, you just said that you really, you have a, um, I forgot your exact words, but you have a hard Issue. time or you struggle with you struggle. Yeah. picturing your, your dream life. So what you focus on grows. Mm -hmm. What you focus on expands. So you get more of that. So instead of telling yourself that you struggle figuring out your dream day in the life of Joe, do you think it would be worth your time to sit down and work through that and get past that struggle and figure that out so that you can start focusing on that? Because here's the key is when you can tap into those emotions of what that feels like, what that feels like to wake up as Joe, who's debt free. Bills aren't creeping at the door. Mom's taken care of lawyers under control there there is no spinning out of control there is no chaos you're waking up to the birds chirping you've got a few calls scheduled throughout the day you're loving it because you're blessing other people because you have turned your failures into learning experiences and you have learned to fall in love with the journey and not just the destination and you're smiling all day long loving your life now, when you can tap into those emotions of what that feels like, 
you're already more relaxed. Your shoulders are back. You're not so tense. You're breathing easier. Probably already feel like 10 pounds just got lifted off of your shoulders. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. So that feeling is what you hold on to. Even when you feel like everything's falling apart. Because here is, here is the, the million dollar tip. Your subconscious does not know the different difference between reality and not. So if you deep down believe that that day in the life of Joe is possible and you're worthy of it and you deserve it and you act as if it's already here, your subconscious is like, wait a minute. I didn't, since, since when does Joe have $500,000 in the bank account? Like, I guess that he told me that. So I guess we've got to make it come true. It's those feelings. That is how you, you work with God in the universe and, and manifesting is you assume the feeling. Because when you assume the feeling, we attract more of that. So if you're always feeling stressed out, struggle, overwhelmed, chaos, spinning out of control, you're like shooting out all these vibes of like, give me more, give me more. I want more stress. I want more overwhelm. I want more struggle. And I just want to keep spinning out of control because I don't know how to operate any other way. Instead of going, you couldn't convince me otherwise. I've got a quarter of a million dollars in the bank. I'm blessing people beyond belief. I'm debt free. Mom's taken care of. No problem with the lawyer. Lawyers paid in full for the next X amount of years. No, like everything is good to go. And even when it's not, you are so convinced that that is your life. Nobody could convince you otherwise. And then that is where miracles happen. That is where miracles happen because you, what you focus on expands and you get more of it. Does that make sense? Oh my God. Yeah. I have some major homework to do. I got to put together a my ideal yeah I need to I, I need that starting point so thank you I need that starting point so that's where that that is most likely the the clog of course it is and remember remember what we worked on last time it doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to take forever that's right five that's minutes after we hop off of here you close your eyes and you envision that dream life and it's what you do before you go to bed it's the first thing you do when you wake up and you do it throughout the day whenever you have five seconds it's a feeling that's why we say the affirmations it's it's the affirmations are not solidified in who we are until you feel it right so like everybody on here what would it feel like to be debt free what would it feel like? So I'll never forget when, when I started reaching out to people, I had someone challenge me once and they were like, would you reach out to the person? I was like, no, 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 I'm so scared out of my living ever mind. Never would I reach out to them. And she said, what if I told you I would write you a $10,000 check if you reached out to her, regardless if she said yes or no. And I was like, oh yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So again, see, just tiny little shifts because here's the deal. You don't know. What if, what if you do reach out to that person and it does produce $10,000 in a month, two months, a year, five years, you don't know. So it's shifting that, right? So it's that feeling. What would it feel like um, to receive that Lavelle Pioneer email and it say $10,000. What would that feel like? How would you feel? See, that's the feeling that you grasp and you hold on to that feeling because that's the feeling that you go to when you're spinning out of control. You say, nope, not believing it. Not going there. I'm going right here. This is what I'm believing. What would it feel like for that Lavelle Pioneer to say $50,000 for one week? What would it feel like to be able to go, oh, organization, here's a $10,000 check. What would that feel like to be able to give with, with no rules, 
no barriers, no boundaries, anonymously. Like, hello, what would that feel like? Then you, you journal out that feeling and that's where you go. No more spinning out of control because it's not productive. It's, not. it's clogging and it's not going to get you anywhere except more frustration and right. more overwhelm. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you. No, Definitely. I think we should say thank you for being so <laughs> courageous to stand up and to open up. I wish everyone could just give you a round of applause right now. <laughs> You're sweet. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. I hope, um, Lots of you got takeaways from that. I think everybody loved it. Yay. Okay, well, we should probably, does anybody have one more thing? Elise, are you still on? Can we maybe hear you now? Miraculously? Can you? <gasps> oh, yes, we can. Yay! I can Yay! cry. <laughs> okay, I'm in my car. Yay, Yay. Hi, guys. <laughs> I've, got, I've got something really good for you. And it is a challenge because here's what I've learned is making money is directly tied to your mood and your mood is like the weather, always changing. So if you have made the decision that you're going to make money, then you need to become aware of where you start to go down with the sinking ship when your moods go down south, right? So Joe, this applies to you. And I know it applies to so many of you that commented while he was sharing is what I want you to consider paying attention to how these moods are. They're like, I always say you're the captain of the ship. So how is that mood? Like if think of a massive body of water, the Atlantic, the um, Great Lakes near Chicago, we know that when the storms hit those ships that are on the water are in trouble. Now that's the same with our moods, right? Your business is your ship. Your life is your ship. If those moods like the storms come blowing in and you go into panic mode, will you be able to save the sinking ship? No. So how do we get our body back into abundance and abundant thinking? Well, first of all, we need to identify that when we have these moods that are sinking the ship, think about what happens if someone's in panic. It's three things can happen. They all start with F, fight, flight, or freeze. We fight, we run away, or we freeze. And your body, you'll start to notice you have a physical reaction when your emotions start to spin out of control. Am I right? If you've noticed this, type it in the comments. If you've noticed this, type it in your journal. If you haven't noticed this, write it down. I'm going to pay attention next time this, this hits me. Because here's something that I can teach you is it's called the countdown to calm. And what it is, is you take a deep breath in for 10 seconds as you count, and then you release the breath for 10 seconds. You count in for nine, release for nine, count in for eight, release for eight, count in for seven. You get the picture. By the time you get to one, you're like, ah, I got this. And you can even visualize you're in a 10 story building and you're going down an elevator flight by flight. By the time you get off on floor one, you're calm again. Your body is um, not in the fight, flight, or freeze because your adrenaline and the cortisol levels, which are the hormones we release when we go into panic and fear and overwhelm and shut down and run away, that, those hormones are calmed by the ability of our conscious mind to say, we need to get things under control here. I am the captain of this ship. I am not going down with this ship. Write that down, you guys. This is powerful stuff. And you think to yourself, okay, I am the captain of this ship. And then that's one of your tools. Another tool, which I highly recommend, any of you that commented, and if you go and get this app and then you say it's too expensive, then I'm sorry, <laughs> your future is at stake. The app, I think it's free for 14 days, but then it's, I think, 90 days for a year. Now, this is why this app is so powerful. It's called Breathe, B-R-E-E-T-H-E. -E. You get it for free for 14 days. I'm going to challenge you to max out that free experience and, get, and play around with it. Um, it's something that I use because, as you all know, I have my own issues with anxiety, and I've had to overcome them in my life. And I noticed my son with similar tendencies. Now, my husband, he's like, always even keel and he says to me I don't think I want you uh doing that with him because I don't want him to need a crutch and I'm like honey 
guess when I started meditating? When I was 12, under the orders of a psychologist. I had to apply these tools my entire life. If there's nothing wrong with using the systems we need to support our personal development and our existence here on earth, right? If it's created and it supports you in a beneficial way, use it. So I, I was able to get Rob on board with that. Anyway, I play this app with both my kids as we fall asleep at night or as I put them to bed at night. And basically it teaches them meditation and it teaches them how to work through this stuff like I'm sharing with you. Here's the thing. Any of you that are overwhelmed with the panic, the doubt, and the fear, there is nothing wrong with you. You simply have not been taught the tools to support your development. We are teaching you those things now. Okay, so embrace that because you're going to see a, a, a complete change in what you're doing and capable of when you get your subconscious, that um, autonomic nervous system under control. The autonomic nervous system is the, the part of your body that just works on autopilot. And the cool thing is our conscious brain can calm things down when we choose. And we just have to make the choice. You know what? It's not that there's something wrong with me. It's that I just need to learn the skills, right? I need the tools. And so then you make the choice to implement these tools. Wendy also has a daughter who is similar to my son, similar to me, similar to Wendy. She and I both, we have our troubles with anxiety. I mean, we're the first to admit it. And we know that using these tools, they support our growth and our greatness. And here's another thing I've learned. People that have this personality type, of, of, of like we can literally short circuit real quick um we actually I, I i believe we are the healers we are the intuitives we are the people who are are really close to god is in his uh voice but yet our society has made it so wrong that you feel like there's something wrong with you until you're surrounded by a tribe of people who know that you are actually a spiritual healer and a person who will create spiritual intervention on the behalf of people that cannot do it for themselves. Why do you think the witches were burned at the stake? Think about it. Throughout history, we'll see examples of people that had this spiritual connection and yet were, they're made wrong. They're put on drugs, right? There's nothing wrong with you. You're, I, I know, right? I, want to cry <laughs> I, just, I like had goosebumps the whole time. I want to be like, please. Just, please, please. I know. <laughs> but but, that, but I, I want to drive that point home because it's so important to understand that it's so long for your, like, if you think about this, if you've been made wrong for who you are for an entire lifetime, of course, it's going to take some time, right? Yes. It's yeah. going to take some time. you got to learn the new tools. You have to literally rewire the neural pathways in your brain. The cool thing about being human, though, is that is our gift. We have the ability to choose to grow, the ability to choose to return to love, the ability to choose to be a light for God. We are the way showers. So, Joe, when you feel like giving up, Melissa, when you want to give up, Richard, when you say, I don't know what, I, what my dream is, that is the devil winning. That's our society, again, keeping you small. Yeah. Because when you shine so bright and you step into your light and you let that greatness shine, it makes other people uncomfortable, right? That's why you feel the resistance right there. That is at the heart of it. Because every time you're stepping out into the light and you become a way shower, what happens is people will try and put you back in your place. And so write this down. It's called the organism theory. The organism theory means when one organism in a community shifts its behavior, its thoughts, words, and actions, the entire community will shift as a result. However, you will always face resistance when you step outside of the bubble. And you may have heard me share this story before of the crabs. If, if, if someone goes crabbing and they put a bunch of crabs in a bucket and one crab starts to climb up out of the bucket, guess what? The other crabs don't boost them out. <laughs> they pull them back down and then they all get boiled. So, I mean, literally, like, if you need that kind of visual, I mean, take it. Put a picture of a crab up on your wall and say, I'm going to be the crab that gets out <laughs> because whatever visuals you guys need, get them, get your hands on them ASAP because your life depends on it. Yep. Right. And so many people's lives depend on you stepping into your greatness. No longer small, no longer afraid, 
no longer allowing the panic and the worry and the fear to take over. Because again, the devil wins because he only has control of your mind only. And if you have found yourself succumbing to that, that's like the crabs pulling you back down into the bucket. You get to choose. Nope. Not today. Not today. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. Right? So every single moment we choose not today. And I want, I'm going to give you a challenge here because today more than ever before, there are vast numbers of financial opportunities available to you. If you want it, you have to be open-minded to doing something a little different, which is what we are doing here on this journey to freedom, right? This is different. This isn't common in our culture today. We don't, people don't get on and talk about God in the marketplace. We do because we are the way showers. So here's, here's the deal. I know that there, you're probably said some of these excuses yourself. I'm afraid I don't have the time. I'm afraid I can't do it. I'm afraid nobody likes me. I'm afraid of what people will think. Well, fear is the single most defeating emotion in your life. Okay. So can I challenge you to give one hour a day to being free of the grips of fear? You can set your timer. One hour. I'm going to challenge you to give it an eight-week experience. One hour a day, you all. You can set your timer. Choose your time right now. When will that hour be that you will be free of fear? Okay, everyone's commenting. I'm in. Good. When is that one hour a day that you will be free of fear? You get to choose it. Now, this is also the time where you need to focus on what makes a difference in your business. Because remember, in order to can create financial freedom, we need to take inspired action. We've been working on the other pieces about operating from inspiration and being prompted and taking the steps needed. But you also know that there's probably certain things that you can do that move the needle on your business. And if you go into procrastination and say you're going to do it later when you feel like it, guess what? that time probably won't come. That's called procrastinating. Analysis paralysis. So one hour per day, you are going to take action and you are not going to worry about the outcome. You're not going to worry about what others think about you. You're not going to worry about your past failures or whatever challenges, disabilities, or illnesses you may have because everybody has something. And I want you to see whatever those challenges are as, as part of your gift. Okay, instead of saying it's my condition, blah, 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 you all, you know, you say it, stop it. It's not serving you. So here's the deal. I want you to think about if what is the most important thing you need to do in your business to move the needle? Is it making phone calls? Then make phone calls. Is it following up with your customers? Follow up with your customers. Is it talking to new prospects? Talk to new prospects, whatever it is, but you got to do it without fear. You can't sit there and perseverate over if they like you or not or if they're ignoring your message because you've made the decision to join us. And I predict that if you faithfully spend one hour doing the key parts of your business per day, not busy work, P.S., that within two years, you will be totally on your way to financial freedom and independence. One hour per day, you all, that would add up to 365 times two. <laughs> someone do the math <laughs> and how many hours that would take but honestly the best gift you can give yourself is to make the decision to take the step towards eliminating worry from your life I know that you'll become successful in this as a result because that's what's happened to me that's what's happened to Wendy and this happens because when we allow ourselves to take the inspired action rather than to shrink in fear then guess what? Big things happen. And I want you to consider that app I shared with you, Breathe. That's going to teach you the techniques to get your body in alignment with your brain. Okay? Because you're, you're, the way you, like people, here's the crazy thing. People will actually not do stuff because they're afraid of how it will feel. This was empowering to me because I realized one day that a, feel, a, a feeling won't kill me. And yet people will procrastinate for days, weeks, and months on end doing nothing because they're afraid. So don't go down with the ship. Wendy comments. 
Um, yeah, I want to share Ephesians six eleven. Put on it's eleven um, and twelve, maybe thirteen. We'll see. Put on the full armor of God, so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist the evil, resist in the evil day, having done everything to stand firm. So it's the, the fight is not against the flesh and blood that we have here on this earth. It is all up here. It's like you just said, the only thing he can hold on to is our mind. That is it. And we have the power and we have the skills and we have the capability to choose otherwise. What an amazing session today. Oh my gosh. So wonderful. So good. So our homework, because you know I like to leave you with homework. Well, I guess I already gave you some. One was the one-hour challenge for eight weeks. And the other one is I want you to eliminate your most self-defeating belief, right? Your most self-defeating belief. Now, this is the belief that has become habitual. It's nagging. It's something that you keep repeating to yourself time and again and time again. Mine was always, I'm so stupid. Really, can I create abundance from that place? Wendy, what was yours? Well, we both have said for a very long time, um, what is wrong with me? Yes. What is wrong with me? And I, for 30 years, mm -hmm. I said, I'm not that smart. I'm not mm -hmm. that smart. So guess what? I believed that. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I want you to consider these. These are subtle messages that you may have been hearing elsewhere. You may be just saying it to yourself. It could be, I don't have enough time. I'll never get something like this done. Nobody wants to hear from me. I'm not smart enough. Uh, people don't like me. Uh, whatever. What is it? You know what it is for you. So what is that most self-defeating belief? That's your homework to write that down. I'll make a post where you guys can comment. Um, also, this could be something around you don't deserve success or other people control your destiny. Perhaps you believe that people are out to get you or you are just a victim of your circumstances, your health, your experience in life, whatever. Um, whatever it is. It's not worth holding on to and is definitely not worth defending that self-defeating belief. Okay. So each time you say to yourself, I am not smart enough, or I'm just stupid, or I don't think I can succeed at this, I want you to change it around and take notice that that belief is not true. It is something that you are creating because here's the thing. You teach people how to treat you. So if you're telling yourself you're stupid and unlovable all the time, do you think other people will treat you with love and respect, right? It always begins with us. Um, if you are worried about your business growing, do you think people are going to get on board with you if you are got one foot out the door? No, because they don't think that you believe in it either. They'll pick up on your energy. I guarantee it. They may not follow your words, but they'll pick up on the energy. So um, as you're concentrating on what it is that you are thinking about, that this is your most self-defeating belief, I'm going to have you probably do some journaling around it. I want you guys to write about it. And how does it feel to notice that you keep repeating that self-defeating belief to yourself throughout the day, right? And as soon as you have realized that you're doing it and what the negative effects are, you get to stop the story. Stop the story and live in God's glory because those self-defeating beliefs are simply lies told to you by the enemy that you then lock in, write in stone, and put it up on your wall. Guess what? Not true. Okay? Like Wendy says, eject that tape. For those of you who grew up in the 80s, you'll know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the other thing. If you save your valuable energy for positive ideas and action, 
don't you think you'll become more successful and creative in your life, more abundant, living in joy and peace and love? Absolutely. Part of this spiritual journey is realizing that it is a spiritual journey, right? It's a spiritual battle. You're simply battling against evil in your own mind when you find that this is your, your, um, what's holding you back the most. And the beautiful thing is it can all be changed. We spend more time reading the scripture. We spend more time journaling about it. We spend more time praying. We spend more time gathering our prayer warriors to pray and do spiritual intervention. I truly believe in that. So if you don't know, um, I just had this random thought yesterday. I don't think I've even shared this with you all yet. I had this random thought yesterday about spiritual intervention. So I Googled it and there's a book called Spiritual Intervention. You got to get it. It's about praying for people who have issues with addiction, compulsive behavior, self-defeating thoughts and habits. And it explains in that book, referencing scripture, why people do that. It's incredible. Wendy, you're going to love that book. Okay. All right. That'll wrap it up for us today. I'll go post in the group and we will be live again tomorrow. Wendy, are you leading tomorrow? Yes. It's called Spiritual Intervention. Yeah. Wendy's leading tomorrow. Perfect. Spiritual Intervention is the book if you want to grab it. The, the two words just popped into my mind and sometimes I get these random thoughts. I'm like, oh, that sounds like a, an interesting concept. So I Google it and there's a great book. And guess what? It actually was very relative to something that is going on in our family. So I was like, hello. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. We'll talk to you guys soon. Next Zoom coming soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.